little while ago, I joked that we were gonna rename this channel Badass Women Thinking Fast. In honor of that title, today we're gonna look at one of the most badass survivors of all time, Mary Vincent, who at the age of 15 survived a brutal attack and incredible odds to put her rapist behind bars. Ah, uh, the 70s. The pants were flared, the shirts were tie-dyed, and everyone, and we mean everyone, was hitchhiking. That included 15-year-old Mary Vincent, who in 1978 was dealing with the tumult of her parents' divorce and a difficult home life. Mary decided to leave her family home in Berkeley, California and hitchhike to her grandfather's home in Corona. On September 29th, Mary stood at the side of the road thumbing a ride beside two other hitchhikers. 50-year-old Lawrence Singleton pulled up in his van. Singleton told the hitchhikers that he was going their way, but that he only had room for Mary. This struck the other hitchhikers as odd. Singleton had lots of room in his van, so why could he only take the teenage girl? I didn't think about what type of person he was or, or the situation. I was just, I was tired. And he seemed like a, a grandfather type figure. Mary fell asleep as they drove, and when she woke up, she realized that Lauren Singleton had been driving her in the wrong direction. He apologized and pulled over the van. He told her that he needed to grab something from the back and that afterwards he would turn around and get her home. Mary had a bad feeling. While Singleton went to the back of the van, she got out and bent over to tie her shoe, preparing to run. That's when he came up behind her and hit her in the head with a sledgehammer. She blacked out. When Mary came to, she was tied up in the back of the van. They were parked along a quiet road so nobody could hear her scream. He began raping me. I asked why he was doing this. There was no response. He raped me a few times, probably about six times, and he fell asleep, but I couldn't. I couldn't get away because I was completely tied. I wanted to die. That was the worst feeling I've ever felt. That's all I was thinking. Please, God, kill me now. Mary's attack lasted through the night. When the morning came, she begged Singleton to let her free. And he said, you want to be set free? I'll set you free. Singleton pulled out a hatchet and cut off both of Mary's arms at the elbow. She fought hard and the wounds were not clean. At one point, Mary fell to the ground and looked up to see Singleton frantically flicking his arm. She saw that her own dismembered hand was still clutching his sleeve. Thinking Mary was dead, Singleton rolled her body over the edge of a 30-foot cliff, leaving her to bleed out in a culvert. The fall contributed four broken ribs to her already grievous injuries. All I wanted to do was go to sleep. But all I heard was a voice saying that I can't go to sleep. He's going to do this to somebody else. And I can't let that happen. That's what was going through my heart, my mind, and my soul. I couldn't have him do that to another girl. To stop the bleeding, Mary dug the stumps of her arms into the dirt of the ravine, creating impromptu mud packs. Then, she began crawling back up the cliff towards the road. It took her all day, and when she got there, the highway was deserted. So, she began walking towards the distant sounds of traffic, guiding herself by moonlight and holding the stumps of her arms in the air so that gravity would help to keep her blood inside her body. After three miles of walking, a convertible with two passengers drove by, but when they saw Mary's nightmarish form soaked in blood and dirt, they sped off. I mean, think about it. I have no hands now, and I'm covered from head to toe in blood. I look like something from a Fright Night movie. And they took off. So all I could think of was, I'm going to die out here, because everyone's too afraid to even stop. The next car that drove by held a honeymooning couple. They were only on that particular road because they had gotten lost. Luckily, the couple stopped for Mary and raced off to the nearest phone. 
Mary was airlifted by helicopter to the closest hospital. She had lost more than half of the blood in her body. From her hospital bed, Mary was able to perform yet another miracle. She described her attacker to a police sketch artist with such precision that when Lauren Singleton's neighbor saw the sketch on the news, she knew immediately who the attacker was. It took police only 10 days to identify, find, and charge Lauren Singleton. Six months after the attack, Mary was in court telling a jury exactly what she had gone through in the 24 hours during and after her time with Lauren Singleton. He was found guilty of kidnapping, attempted murder, and rape. But it was the 70s, remember? So all of those crimes added up to a sentence of only 14 years in prison, the maximum allowed at the time. Mary Vincent showed immense courage throughout the proceedings, but she fled the court one day after Singleton whispered something to her. As she walked past his seat in the court, Singleton told her, If it's the last thing I do, I will finish the job, quote unquote. At the time, inmates in California were allowed to earn one day off of their sentences for every day that they worked inside the prison. Lauren Singleton acted as an assistant teacher inside a prison classroom, which meant that his rape, torture, and attempted murder of Mary Vincent only kept him behind bars for a total of eight years. He expressed no remorse for Mary's mutilation, claiming that she was a, quote, $10 whore and that he attacked her because she threatened to accuse him of rape. In other words, he was the victim and Mary was a liar who chopped her own arms off? Well, no, said Singleton. There was another guy in the van with him whose name was Larry, but a different Larry, not him. Whatever, bro. When word got out that Lauren Singleton was getting out of prison, Mary Vincent was terrified. She dropped out of school, developed an eating disorder, and struggled to leave the house. Her marriage crumbled, and her fear drove her to move from place to place. She ended up in hiding. So did Singleton's daughter, whose own experiences with her father caused her to change her name multiple times and move across state lines. An amazing part of this story is that, while technically Singleton was allowed out on parole, he ran into a problem. He was so reviled that town after town refused to accept him. In Tampa, angry crowds picketed and protested until Singleton was removed. In Rodeo, a crowd of 500 forced police to move Singleton from his hotel room with an armed guard. In Concord, protests made local officials cave and reject the parolee. On one occasion, Singleton was under such threat that he had to be removed from an apartment with a bulletproof vest. Finally, with no city willing to take him, Singleton was forced to live out his year of parole on the grounds of San Quentin. After that, though, well, after that, he was free to move wherever he wanted. He chose Florida, where in 1997, a neighbor saw Singleton stab a woman to death in his living room. The victim's name was Roxanne Hayes. She was a mother of three. At the trial, Mary Vincent again stepped forward and faced her attacker in court, telling the jury of his previous crimes. Lawrence Singleton was sentenced to death for the murder of Roxanne Hayes, but he died of cancer in prison before the sentence was carried out. Thanks in part to the advocacy of Mary Vincent, the Singleton Bill was later drafted in the California legislature, preventing the early release of criminals whose crime involved torture. The minimum sentence for a crime involving torture is now 25 years. Today, Mary Vinson is a thriving artist, mother, wife, and victim's advocate. Her prosthetic hands are not a limitation. She's an accomplished portrait artist, bowler, pool player, and inventor, among other accomplishments. Mary has spoken publicly about her ordeal and continues to fight for victims' rights. That's God and my sons that, that keep me going. Uh, they keep me loving life more than most people. I appreciate it more, and I'm just glad that I'm given another chance at life that I didn't die. Thanks for hanging out with us at Beyond Crime. If you want to support more true crime content, be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. And feel free to write rude things about Lauren Singleton. We love it.